All right, well, welcome. Uh, we're here today for supercharging your estimating. Um, this is a really interesting uh, uh, program you're gonna see here today. We didn't do this as just a webinar. We did this as a, a live session here, so you get the full hands-on, and we app want you to go ahead and ask us questions as we go along, and uh, you know anything you need to see, uh, they're, they're more than willing to show you how it goes. Uh, for any of you who don't know me, I'm John Kenny. Um, I was in the roofing contracting side for 45 years. Uh, I have Cottony Consulting Group now and run that and basically work with roofing contractors. And I love to uh, meet uh, with friends here, John and Ryan, all the time to see the different technologies that are being used. And I think this is really super interesting and you're going to get a lot out of it. So I'm going to kick it over to both you, uh, John and Ryan. Thanks, John. So uh, again, I'm Ryan Resides, and um, you know we're here uh, representing a couple different companies. First is, of course, Division Seven Roofing, and uh, secondly, our uh, sister company called Imagine Technologies Group, which is the uh, arm that kind of represents the the drone technologies and the online platforms that we're going to be discussing today. Um, from the roofing standpoint, um, I am our chief estimator and the head of our sales um, and do a lot of sales and marketing, as you can see from us on here today with Imagine Technologies Group. Hi, guys. This is uh, John Kiesel here, president of Division 7 Roofing and Imagine Technologies Group, and we're definitely happy to have you on board and watching us here today. So what we're going to take you through here is a journey that gets you from point A to point B, the, the process to get to where we are now that we're going to show you the end in mind. But so what we did was we developed a drone training platform with our partners at Drone U on how to control, navigate, and utilize a drone to, cr to create high resolution imagery, modeling, orthos, and point clouds so that you can bring that technology into our platform that stores, hosts, and makes all that imagery uh, manipulatable and the tools associated with it. So you have a virtual model of the buildings and roofs that we go out and look at today, traditionally hands-on. So Ryan is our estimator. He uses this imagery and estimates from his office. Our takeoff people have drones and certifications and they fly, collect the data on the roof. We don't imply that drones um, eliminate people, but it makes the process better when you take a person who understands roofing and you train them on how to utilize a drone in the process. So, you know, just to take you quickly, we're going to show you a demo of the drone you uh, plat the drone you training course that you know is online you can purchase so that you can start training your people on how to fly acquire and get their part 107s and then ryan's going to take you through a brief introduction to the optelos environment and then take you right into how we utilize that for supercharging the estimation process so we will go ahead and share our screen here and show you the promo video for our training course that we developed alongside uh, the country's best drone trainers at Drone U. Here we go. Are you in the commercial roofing business? Are you creating estimates, inspections, or maybe you're just ready to level up your business? Join me for the commercial roofing inspection class where you're going to learn how to fly these drones to collect data, analyze it, and interpret it to use it for your business. Have you ever had to go to a site repeatedly over and over again? Those days are over. It's time to make your business more efficient and use drones to gather intelligence to make database decisions. That way in your business, you're gonna be able to create more accurate estimates and quotes, but you're also gonna be able to better engage your clients with these 3D models. You won't have to revisit the area after acquiring and gathering that data. You can further engage your clients with this data and really help sell future clients with the data you've already gathered. So we're going to go over why photogrammetry for roof inspections. What are the benefits? Why is this going to help you? And we're really going to try to dig deep to showcase the value. We're also going to go over preparing for the course. What equipment, what software will you need? Then we're going to move into what is 
photogrammetry. We're also going to go over deliverables. Uh, we're going to go over image acquisition practices. Then we're going to move into the macro workflow overview, going over exactly what you need to do when you go out into the field. Then we're going to go into understanding how we've broken down these deliverable packages from simple and to detail. There's different acquisition methods. We're going to go over why you would want one particular method over the other. It's time to learn how to level up your business to make sales easier, increase revenue, reduce costs, be more efficient, and overall scale your business. Join me for the commercial roofing inspection course because simply put, you don't want to miss it. You might get left behind. All right, let's take flight. Gets me so pumped up when we watch that every time, John. So I'll leave the uh, QR code there on the screen for a second if anybody wants to grab a photo of it. And, of course, the website down there at the bottom, props.thedroneu.com slash commercial roof inspections. And there are uh, three different course options, I believe, uh, based upon where you are at in your drone journey. So... Those options are there whether you've never touched a drone before or maybe you do have a drone and you already have your Part 107 license. We can take you from taking basic pictures to making beautiful models and other deliverables like us to import into your estimating programs and take it to the next level. So any comments at the moment on some things we saw there, Mr. Kenny? Well, I think it's, I, I like the way you presented this, having the training right up front before you, uh, you know, to use this, learn how to properly use it, the advantages to it. Um, so when you were saying about um, what if you don't already have a, a drone license, because you said you have, you know, you got to have a drone license, that's a requirement. Um, that can all work through the same program and get all that at the same time, right? Yeah, absolutely. So some Perfect. of the some of the packages include the part 107 prep course to where it'll get them, you know, kind of the, the study guide of everything they need to know before they go and take that proctored test. You know, it's a observed test because it's an official license um, to, to get their drone license. And when you are flying a drone for commercial reasons, you have to have that. And it's probably also advisable to have some insurance in place as well. Yeah, so that's important for everybody to understand. This isn't, you know, as we said in there, you're going from toy to actual tool. But we're going to go through um, the demonstration on the estimating side, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, where I feel there's a lot additional value into using these within your company um, or, you know, to promote it out to other people if you're in, in on the manufacturing side or the rep side, wherever it may be watching this, that there's advantages more than just this isn't about just going up and taking pretty pictures with a drone. This is about putting it to work and actually making your company uh, more efficient and a lot more money um, and profitability, which is so important in today. So this isn't replacing the estimator or replacing the processes. It, it, it's advancing the processes. So I'm going to turn it back over to you and let you dive right into it. Yeah, absolutely, John. And one thing I'll say before I dive into the Optelos platform here is you made a a very strong point in the um, lack of talent that seems to be out there today. You know, we, we've all had to try to do more or at least the same amount with less people. And it seems like as we're searching around, you know, those industry veterans or plentiful amount of people with the knowledge base necessary, just the numbers aren't, aren't there as much as they used to be uh, for a varying number of reasons. But you know, this is one of those force multipliers for a lot of different reasons to where, you know, somebody like myself, as John alluded to earlier, I used to be the one going up and doing the takeoffs myself. And then we, you know, moved to somebody getting the takeoff information for me. But, you know, I was still wondering, you know, when you get up there and you take me 200 photos of this 3000 square roof, like, where were you standing? What direction were you facing? And if this large building has 30 
RTUs on it, like what, which one were you taking a picture of? You know, you're always wondering like what we like to call situational awareness there. There's always that desire for more and what's in between the photos. And we believe that we've solved that issue. And also, you know, as the estimator for division seven roofing, you know, unless it's a very special scenario, like high rise applications or some other tricky logistics where I just need to get my eyes on it uh, because it's almost more about the logistics than it is the roof. I haven't stepped foot on one of these projects before sending out estimates in two years. And I can tell you that our estimates are more accurate and we're able to get more out the door because of this technology. So just a little tidbit for everyone to think about. So diving right in. So is every, John, are you seeing the uh, Optelos screen? Yes, okay. you're all good. Great. Looks like we have a chat in there, Ryan. Uh, no, that was me telling everybody to ask their questions, throw it in the chat. Got I got you. Thank you. So uh, what I've done here, and I will go back a screen just to show there, there's a, a lot of different ways to navigate around the Optelos platform. So you see here we have a map view. Uh, we are based out of Columbus, Ohio. Um, so you can see most of the things that we've dealt with are right here in Columbus, Ohio. And as we zoom in, that one big number starts breaking down into smaller numbers to uh, different entities uh, that we've worked with and numbers of projects. We also have a few different search bars up here. Entity um, for sake of demonstration would be, you know, the company that we're working with. But uh, my favorite one is just the search work package. I usually already know the project I'm looking for. So I just come over here, type it in and it launches the work package. So the one thing that you'll notice is that this is very similar to a Windows environment. You know, when we're looking at the screen, we see a series of folders and all we have to do to get inside those folders is do a couple clicks and it'll launch them. Now here in our overviews, you can see this is what most people do with drones. And don't get me wrong, there's, a lot of information here, but it, it's really limited. You get some clear views. Um, you know, we most drones these days do have pretty good 4K cameras on them, so we can glean a decent bit of information. But, you know, what you see is what you get. There's not much more that we can uh, use this particular image for in augmenting our operations be, beyond looking at this. Okay. So, the first thing um, I want to do is give you a quick overview of a few different points I'm going to touch, um, and then we'll start diving into them. So there's um, a screen called Fly View. If everyone looks towards the top of the page here, and uh, Fly View essentially is a top-down view, and it is going to plot some photos and use what's an ortho, which is a, a flat 2D image model of the building. Um, then I'm going to dive into some of the 3D models, and there's two different producibles there. There's the 3D mesh, which is the most aesthetically pleasing one, and then there is a point cloud, as it's known, and that is very similar to the 3D mesh, but it is composed of millions and millions of colorized dots, and that's where a lot of our High, highly accurate tools come into play. So height measurements, width measurements, area, volume, we can even do elevation cuts. So um, that's what we're about to dive into. And um, as John said, feel free to type in some questions in the chat box. So without further ado, let's check out the fly view. So the first thing you'll notice is we were actually uh, utilizing a roof drawing here to uh, play around with some assessment codes and deficiencies. I'm going to click that over to the ortho mosaic. And I got to get our Zoom call out of the way. Let me hide some different measurements that we've done for this project. And click us over to some drone photos. Okay. So everyone's probably looking at this and going like, whoa, what's up with all the triangles? So Optelos has a patented feature here of um, location technology, and each of these triangles that you are seeing 
was a drone photo that was taken during the flight. So not only is it being plotted um, and in the XY coordinate of, of the GPS signal, but it's actually showing you by that triangle what direction was the drone facing at the time it took this picture. And where this can get very helpful is, you know, think about the original way an estimator gets an estimating package. You know, if somebody's highly organized, they took those however many hundreds of photos and broke them down into different folders, but you're still constantly scrolling through pictures to figure out where's the picture of this thing on the roof. Because we have that location intelligence built right into our program, you know, if I am trying to see something over in this area where we have, um, you know, some RTUs and something else going on, I know that a great place to start is the triangle that's very close to um, the, the item that I'm trying to see, okay? And as you understand the flight patterns better and how the cameras are angled, you'll, you'll get better at guessing which ones um that you're that that you need to click on you know this particular one was done at a little bit of an angle that's why it wasn't looking straight down at the camera but you can imagine the different scenarios if you're trying to locate something specifically and what that location intelligence will do for you okay the second thing i want to show off let me hide some of these uh Yeah, we got to reload the page. Sorry about that, guys. One moment. Sometimes she gets a little cranky when we're streaming video and uh, trying to pull up all this data from the internet. They are big files. So there we go. So we will. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show, and that's very important because, as John said earlier, the, we, we're not in a belief that this just completely replaces boots on the roof. This is an augmentation to that process. And a beautiful part about this location technology is that as long as you have the location services turned on on your cell phone, once you take those photos and you upload them into the Uptelos environment, they are going to be plotted just like the drone photos are. So, and that and that's typically our takeoff process. We have couple different types of flight patterns, depending on how much resolution I need, um, you know, that we talk about with our takeoff person before they go out. And then they have a standard way that they go around the roof. And, you know, I usually try to tell them, you know, look for, look for weird things. Let, you know, what it, it does something not look like a standard detail that I might want a really close up photo on. And then as you can see, those get plotted just like the drone photos. So I can I can easily tell where that person was standing and uh, get a picture of that, Not no problem. And um, you know, one thing you're seeing here in this image in particular is that any of the images that are uploaded can be annotated or tagged in different ways so that when you come back to this or you're trying to communicate with a customer or a teammate on this particular project, it's very easy to get back to those photos because they are annotated and tagged. And then there's even a reporting bit ability of Optelos to where you can tell it to export all those tags and annotations right into a report that's easily emailed over to different people. A couple other things to show off are the, uh, the line tools, the box tools. I don't really need to show those to anybody here. These are so common with Google Earth and any other program out there. But, um, you know, you saw me earlier kind of zoom in. And I can guarantee you if you were to bring up this property on Google Earth, <clears throat> by now, these things would be so blurry, you, you'd have a really hard time telling, like, what's really going on. And that's that's the biggest one of the biggest points of this imagery is that, you know, when you are estimating something and here at Division 7, we, we like to use the estimating edge. So what we'll do is we actually take these flat 2D orthos as they're known and we import that into the edge. So that's our actual base map. So as you can imagine, when I have 10 times the resolution that Google Earth is providing, you know, we can keep zooming and zooming and rather having 
um, you know, every few seconds having to jump back to that set of photos that we're constantly clicking through, I'm already picking up efficiency because I'm able to zoom in a lot further and really get a sense of what's going on, you know, seeing those gas lines, um, especially on very large ballasted roofs. It gets really hard to see them from a Google Earth perspective and exactly where they're running. You know, seeing that grease contamination off on, on the roof, you can see those black spatters on there. A lot of different things we can glean because of that high performance Im imagery and it being able to go into a lot of different roofing programs. You know, I, I, people use different ones, but imagine anything that uses a picture base map that you have to import, we can supercharge that program right from the drone imagery. And if you're not using Google Earth, the other way is you have your takeoff guy out person or you're the estimator, you're making a hand sketch, you're going to make your own drawing and you're going to start trying to plot all this information by hand. And unless you're really, really artistic, which I never was, <laughs> uh, you end up with a lot of chicken scratch and a lot of notes and you're trying to figure out after you get back, what the heck was I actually even thinking when I did that? So this process you know, eliminates your need to even count uh plot or worry about that at all because you're going to get the real-time information of today versus whenever that google earth image may have been taken for your belt and suspenders double check absolutely and thank you for if i could jump in just yeah real quick please. before you jump on to the next level here please. Um, one of the, anybody's used google earth um you've had a bad experience somewhere along the line where depending on where you've snapped that photo to put into your program um, by the elevation coming down from the Google chain actually does change the building elevation. It's not an accurate way of doing it. You always have to reset the scale where you don't on this. The scale is set. It doesn't matter whether you're zooming in, zooming out, which is great because that's what we teach, right? We want to have a proper estimate going out quality. It's got to be accurate. And it all starts with the takeoff. And I know that any of you have sat in, you know, through any of my seminars and teachings and classes that's one of the first things we talk about is this has got to be right up front because if this is wrong, your whole estimate is going to be wrong because you're working off of poor material. Now, I know here you're going to get into one of my favorite uh, parts of this product, and I'll talk about that once you do the demo. I love this uh, this part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one thing to mention on that accuracy standpoint there, Mr. Kenny, is, you know, uh, when people get into the drone world, they will they will learn about something called ground sampling distance or GSD. And why that is important is that determines the accuracy of the producible. So the way we are teaching people to fly, at least in the detailed package standpoint, you know, when you go into that point cloud, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, we're generally around with an, an inch of real world accuracy. Uh, we do a lot of very large ballasted roofs in our region of the country, and um, other measuring tools have problems when you get to buildings that are a thousand feet long. We all know that wheels break after a while and give you a bad measurement. Um, it's real fun trying to work with a 300 foot tape on a windy day, even <laughs> if there are a couple people and lagging that around. You know, the fact that I don't really need to do that anymore and that's time saved and we're moving on to the next thing is is absolutely amazing. So let's dive right in and and I'm right I'm right there with you Mr. Kenny the 3D mesh is just one of my favorite things to look at. Um to John to John Kiesel's point here, you know, we used to produce a takeoff sheet for our estimators, okay? You know, and it had to have the counts how many small, medium, large curbs, field routes, you know, all the different things that are on a roof. And you were kind of depending on that takeoff person's opinion and accuracy for the accuracy of your estimate. You know, that burden now lays on the estimator sitting in the chair because of this producible right here. So if I wanted to count things, I'm pretty far zoomed out. You can tell we're already getting a good sense of what's going on. Now I'm going to take you in for the real show. So let's say we wanted to figure out what's going on down by oh, this grease trap right here that on the fly view, we noticed there was some black spattering. So 
all of these are going to continue to render as you zoom in. So you'll notice for a couple seconds, it might be a little blurry and then it sharpens. That's because it's constantly loading information as we continue to zoom in. And, you know, we, we like to explore a lot of different technologies, um, but I haven't seen anything out there that can approach the real world accuracy of how we fly the drones and pairing them with Optelos online system so that we can get views right th like this right from the seat of the estimating chair. Um, I think this is where it starts spurring ideas for people from the service standpoint, from the re-roofing standpoint. You know, really fine details, you know, sometimes they do start to drop off like really tiny gas lines, but I can assure you this is light years ahead of anything you're ever going to get publicly available in Google Earth. And <clears throat> frankly, um, you know, since I've been estimating, these are usually the things that are missed, right? And if I have an idea from the model that something is there and I'm not 100% sure, what do you do? You go back to the fly view screen. You grab that triangle that you know is right over top of this unit and you get the actual drone photo in seconds to verify, yep, that's a gas line coming down through there, count one of those and move on. No more of the click and no more of the wondering what's actually going on. You've got it right in front of you. So yeah, we can just spin around here a couple more times just to show off the resolution. You know, we're seeing a condenser unit sitting on pads. We got some pitch pocket action going on there. Um, lots of different Lots of different possibilities here, whether it's roofing, whether it's, frankly, other exterior envelope contractors out there, landscapers, parking lots, we can capture it all. Um, we've done vertical wall inspections for different consultants out there, so uh, a lot of different possibilities, but um, that is the 3D mesh. Any uh, any comments, Mr. Kenny, or, or questions, or anyone else out there, John? Do you I mean, have the nice thing about this, I could tell you, when I was in the, the world of estimating on the contracting side, um, one is why I like the product and the and the purpose of using this is you're at your your good your your skilled estimators shouldn't be wasting their time out on the roof. You don't have enough of them, especially today. They're even less. But what was the problem? You had a takeoff person, you had your service division, whoever it may be, went out. And it would always be, they'd never get that picture that really mattered to me, to how to put the estimate together properly. I'd have thousands of pictures and photographs of the roof, but never the one I really needed. What I like about this is you can zoom down in on it. And it's like, I'm, I am I mean, this is talking about a 30,000 foot view and a walking of the roof view. You can't do any better than this. This is the same as being there. And your person that's doing the drone is going to take your core cuts, any other information that you need while they're out there. So. I love it. And excuse me. And really, it's the opportunity for that drone person, that takeoff person. You know, there's technology involved, and you're you're going to be dealing with a person that's going to be trained, and that person that's that's performing this work for you is going to work hand in hand with you consistently, and have a an opportunity to to move up into the estimation role. So we, you know, we have a different path to success other than you have to spend 10 years out on a roof working really really hard and if you were smart and you had capabilities to utilize uh computers and math components and, and people skills and all those things you may not last that long in roofing to to get there so this definitely creates a path to being the next uh operational key person for your company yeah, this is exactly, you know, to, to jump back onto that, this is, you know, when you train an estimator, and we'll talk, I know we're going to talk about some other uses at the end of this, but when you train an estimator, there's skills to how to do the estimate, how to do it properly. Then you also have to have an understanding of what we do. That's why it's very hard to jump industries unless you understand the industry. But this is a great onboarding to get somebody in to learn the technical, you know, the outside technical part of what we do and learn about it so that when you start to bring them in to teach them the skills to become the estimator, they already understand the knowledge that is going to be required of how to work in our industry. Well said, John. Definitely. Thank you.
Nothing to add on to, <laughs> on to that statement. Very powerful, sir. So diving right into the point cloud. So you can see, you know, it, it almost looks as good as the 3D mesh, but it's not quite visually impressive. But what the photogrammetry program, as it's known, has done here is it's it's made up the same model out of millions and millions of little dots. And, and why that's important is when we start getting into some scenarios where we may need some some uh, highly accurate measurements, um, you know, maybe you're trying to figure out curb height flashings and you, it's a questionable flashing height. Uh, we can jump way down into, and I'll give it a second here to render. It's a little slower than normal because we're streaming video, but um, I can jump way down into that curb flashing itself. And then I can come over here to my tools tray and I'll just go through these here real quick. Now, one thing to understand from a roofer's perspective is that Optelos serves um, a couple of other major markets, which are the telecommunications industry and the oil and gas industry. So some of these tools here may not make sense for us, but they they leave them enabled because they don't want to just tie our hands. There may be certain scenarios where they come in handy. So things like angle measurement and um, I forget what this azimuth. Yeah, these these are all things for cell phone towers and things like that. But in the roofer's world, you know, getting highly accurate distant measurements, height measurements, you know, there may be some cases where volume comes into play, area is an obvious one. And then, you know, one of our favorites, which is, it's called height profile, but this is an elevation cut. Um, and I'll show off just a couple of these here, because um, most people know what measuring tools look like, but we can, uh, oops, went a little too far there. We can come in here and we can start grabbing measurements right within that 3D environment. And because I'm using the height tool, it's only going to measure, you know, the height, the height difference between where you first click and where, where you second click. So even if I were to bring it over way sideways like this, you can see that measurement, it's only about the height difference within the model. So we can, um, we can plot that point and then we can just say curb height and there's lots of different categorization options you see you see there that we've uh, done through demos and oh, my zoom calls in the way again ah i can't get to it sorry guys all the screen share things were in the way of me clicking the save button. <laughs> so there we go. So we click that and, um, you know, it's going to give you the height difference between the two points. Um, and to, you know, this, this particular one, I believe we had a ground sampling distance accurate enough to where if I needed to get down to that inch accuracy, I could, you know, I would carefully zoom really, really far in on that curb and plot my points very carefully and know that, Hey, we're we're good, you know. Hey, I have I have right about eight inches in there, you know. I'm seeing a height a height measurement of about you know that 0.7 uh, feet in there. Um, and then let's show off one more real quick, which is the the elevation cut. So what we're going to do is strike a line through our oops, my bad guys. I've been using way too many software programs today. And we're going to blow up this little box down here so everybody can see a wee bit better. Before I get going on this. But what this is doing for you, elevation one, we'll call it, save that. What this is doing for you is it's taking an elevation cut similar to what we would see in a, in a set of architectural plans. So maybe, you know, the use case for this is sometimes we come across uh, drone imagery where, you know, and you can kind of see some in this model too, where we're starting to see mineral staining. Um, and especially if we're seeing that at the, the high end of curbs or something like that, we may be wondering like, 
is their deflection in the roof there. Now, I want to clarify, don't mistake that we're able to see deflect, we're able to determine and say, oh, there's deflection in the deck. No, we're talking about just the surface of the roof, maybe, and there's a slew of different reasons that could be causing that. But it's the positive identification that there is deflection in the roof surface that's important to this specific scenario. So you're wondering like, oh man, I'm seeing some mineral staining or something on the membrane there. Like, do we have ponding water? Like you take your elevation cut, we can come in here and we can start zooming in, zooming in to exactly where that is. So now notice on my box, we have both measurements from a Y perspective to see what, what the height profile is. And on the model itself, as, as I move along that line, it's giving a little indicator as to where you're at on the roof to help guide you through that. So, um, you know, another thing is just checking the general slope of the roof. You know, you can see, uh, you can get in here and follow along in the X, Y coordinates and get a very good idea of the height change from, you know, the gutter line and back up to the front wall to see what's going on with the slope in this roof. Um, and I'm sure people out there can think of a few different use cases, but those are a couple of the, the most common things we utilize this tool for. I can think of one, Ryan. What do you got, John? <laughs> new construction. Uh, we, we've demoed this for some new construction guys and right away is that, you know, we had an issue with the GC that, you know, constructed the building. They, they blamed the, the poor drainage on uh, the roof assembly and being able to use this to prove that it was actually a structural design issue in the deck. Uh, save them a ton of conversations that did need to be had to get back to the source of the issue. So there's verification processes that play out, but uh, it's a tool you have if you need it. Absolutely. Yeah, I bet so, it would prove out very well a new construction. You take a picture of it afterwards and you can show where the drain is in the wrong column line like it usually is, why it's <laughs> ponding water. So you don't have to argue it. with a photo. You can show it. That, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then... Um, you know, we already kind of saw the ortho, which is the flat 2D uh, view, but just to bring it up um, by itself, you know, you can come in here and view that image on its own and highlight some things for tagging, annotating, dropping dropping pins to grab the attention of people and, and put a label on there. Lots of different tools to communicate both internally and, you know, um, in the Optelos environment, we are able to set up um, client privileges for our customers. So we, um, like a lot of people these days, are doing business with out-of-town bu building owners. And rather than just trying to send basic one or two pictures, we can, with a name and email address, give them pretty much instant access to everything we need them to see. So um, or, you know, if we're on a Zoom call like this, you know, we keep it simple. They don't necessarily need access, but we pull up the models and we're able to show them exactly what we're talking about. And it just makes the communication very clear. Um, you know, one story we like to tell on that front is there was a federal, federally regulated distribution pharmacy in, in Indiana. And, you know, it was a very big national company and there were high profile consultants involved. Um, you had people from their headquarters up in the New York, New Jersey area. You had project managers like down in Texas. You had the site people in Indiana. And then you've got us over here in Columbus, Ohio. It's like, man, usually this involves a ton of travel from all parties um, that, you know, I, was this during COVID, John? I can't well, remember. It must have been through COVID. Yeah, yeah. So Everything was during yeah, COVID. Yeah, it sure seems like it. But, uh, you know. <laughs> We were just in a scope review meeting and we were able to pull up our 3D models and walk them through. This is how we want to approach this project. Over here is where we're going to set up our stair tower and our laid down areas and, you know, kind of spell that game plan out for them. And, you know, by the time we got off the phone, they were ready to sign us up. You know, they didn't really want to have scope review meetings with any of the other contractors out there. And, um, you know, we were able to snag the single largest contract in, in our company history. So there's a little success story for everyone out there. Um, and a lot, 
Of course, we had to have the right price, but a lot of that confidence was built through the use of the platform and the imagery that, that you're seeing here today. We do have a question. A uh, question came in, is, uh, is this integrate, does this integrate with Dataformer? So I will say, one, I, I want to kind of clarify, like, what do they mean by integrate? But generally speaking, um, Data Forma, I believe, has like a 250 gigabyte limit on any single file. Um, and, you know, that's a, a good talking point, as you can see on, here you go. This is the full ortho file size right here at 2.15 gigabytes, okay? Something that um, I oftentimes get questions about is like, hey, Ryan, I took that ortho and tried to shove it in some program and it crashed, right? Yeah, I get that. I, I did that at the beginning with the Edge and other programs that we have. So you do have to downsample them a lot of times. You can see this is our downsampled version. Um, but when you downsample them, and there's tons of programs out there, everyone just get on Google real quick, ton of ton of different places that can downsample that, but you're still holding on to the vast majority of mm. that beautiful resolution. We went from two gigabytes to 15 megabytes, and you can still tell I'm, I'm still light years ahead of what Google's going to give me as my base map. Very tight lines in the coping and at the gutter outlines of units seeing the gas lines, all those things. So unfortunately, you know, the storage component um, is one of the reasons we had to find a partner like Optelos. We found very quickly when we started producing these models with these file sizes that were massive, we have a problem. How do we store these? How do we share these with different people, even in our own team or around the country? You know, a funny story, uh, Mr. Kiesel here, right at the start of us playing around with, with the, the drone photogrammetry, we, we purchased a new server for our company, brand new, maybe only a month old. And then um, one of our colleagues comes in and says, like, there's no more hard drive space <laughs> in the new server. And he was like, what do you mean? It's brand new. Well, it turns out because we were doing all of these new flights and things with the drone and producing the models and the sheer file size of them, yeah, we burned out the hard drive that quick in about a month. So, yeah, unfortunately, there's not much to do with data forma here. Optelos is going to be the platform that both stores all that information. It's um, it's a viewer of that information. It brings in the tools that we've showed off here, and it it allows it to be shareable with anyone around the world. Very simple. But to that, but to the question that was asked. We are a data forma user. We are a roof logic user. And we also are the reseller of Optelos and use Optelos in our own environment. Because the value is so great in Optelos, we didn't rule it out of implementation because it didn't talk to our other platforms. The the, the situation that we're in is where we started this was, you know, we want to train people on how to use the drone and use it effectively. And people out there today, contractors say, everybody I thought that they're buying a drone or bought a drone, they have a drone, they're taking pictures. Well, where are you putting even just your single pictures? You're not even creating models or anything with them. You're just taking hundreds of drone pictures. Well, we're putting them into data forma. Well, well, that's nice. You got a, you got a hundred drone photos in data forma now that are all bound samples. You really can't even see them that clearly. And you're just filling up space in your platforms that you know is really not benefiting you a whole heck of a lot so that's why we we justify using it outside of our other systems because of the value it brings to estimating and project kickoff project management and those types of discussions where ryan doesn't even go into data forma for any information we put information into it when we're done yeah. but we don't go to it to find out how to bid a job yeah um Speaking of integration, one thought is a lot of people like to use the the, the hot word API, right? Yeah, uh, Optelus does have API capabilities, just like every other program out there. So if you are willing to pay the cost it takes to have that API connection developed and programmed for you, yeah, it can do that. Uh, we don't we don't do that right now. Um, 
you know, we're, we're fine with having them as two separate systems, but yeah, very, very well could be programmed to be integrated within, um, within data forma and, and making that connection happen. Any other questions you saw there, Mr. Kenny? Uh, no, that's all we have through right now. Um, I know, um, I mean, you, co you covered a lot of far, far as this goes with the estimating. I know what I'd like to, when we get towards the end here, wrap it up with um, other uses that uh, that I know you can use this for in your company to really uh, get the most use out of it. But just staying with the estimating theme here for a minute, um, if you're looking at this from the estimating in your company, what you're doing is you're saving time for your most skilled people that need to put these estimates out. When I was on the estimating side, I would have loved this for a couple of reasons. One is I can prove my own accuracy, right? I can look at something that someone forgot. Usually it's either a wrong measurement in the height of the building or they don't measure the wall flashing or you've got the wrong pictures. Um, so now as long as you're getting the core cut, you know, what, what core cut you need, you're cutting down on that. So this saves time because you really don't want to spend your time estimating on this part of it. You want to spend your time putting your you know pricing strategy together, um, your accuracy, and then also you got to have time to follow up to actually close on the project that you're act you know you're putting the bid in. So this is where this really uh, to me is one of the few tools that I saw out there that I see how it completely integrates with an estimating department as an advantage uh, rather than just another item that we can use. And to your, you know, what you were saying about core cut information, one of the common problems in estimating and takeoffs is people take core cuts and you get, you know, you get a nice diagram or you may even bring that core cut back in a bag or whatever redundancy you have for accurate core cut uh, translation into the estimate. It comes back to where did you take the core cut? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Were you, on, were you on the high side? Were you on the low side? Were you between the drains? Are you in a saddle? I'm not 100% sure. And, and a lot of times you get into that you know, core cut location and where are the drains located and how do I need to build out a saddle uh, solution and the distance between those drains. And you can't really see drains in Google Earth very well. Um, and you, you're, you're trying to start to figure out how to plot these and, and it becomes a problem. But within the Optelos platform and, and with the imagery, those hand photos of where those core cuts were taken are gonna populate and you can, and you start and you tag those core cut photos. So when you're estimating, Ryan just pulls up yeah. core cut tags, ticketing, ticketing and he's gonna see that photo and he's gonna know where that photo was taken on the roof. So we don't have to have you know, back and forth guessing games as to where the core cut was taken. Because a lot of people, when they don't remember, they'll just tell you something to get out of your office and and move on. So yep. that conversation doesn't even have to happen. Yeah, and you, I demoed that, right, as they were talking about that subject. And there's actually multiple ways to do it. Whether you're on Fly View and you press the, you know, annotations button and it'll only bring up those. Or, you know, we like to use the ticketing screen, you know, and they organize them that way. And then I can just see which photo of the core I want to look at. And then I can click this little map button over here or actually launch the photo itself. And then, as I was showing previously, you know, look at the map on the left-hand panel of the screen to get that core location. And that's a camera photo from, you know, yeah. from your phone. What's funny is like, this is a fun use case because we actually did this. This was me back when I was the takeoff person for our company. And we did this years before we ever messed with drones and Optelos. And then we got curious about these capabilities. So we pumped all these images into Optelos and sure enough, it plotted them all years later. And, you know, years later, they actually started doing a project on this building and, um, Unless there's any other questions or things on the estimating side, that may this is a good package to segue into some of the other benefits outside of estimating. Yeah, if you, I'll tell you. So one of the things that I when 
I talk to contractors and I work with them. Like I said, I always put my contractor hat on. I always like to go back uh, to what I would have used it for in my company at the time. And, you know, one thing I like about this is you, you're bringing a young person in, someone that might not have an interest in our industry, but now you've got that technology piece. So you've got a, be, a little bit bigger recruiting field. So now what do you do with this um, other than just with estimating? Because now maybe you do have downtime. Now, if I was a contractor and asked that question, what am I going to do for two days? Maybe I don't have a re-roof to take off. This is so great to use on your production side um, as well. And what I used to use drone photos, but I never had the uh, 3D and the clarity that this is. You can check your production. I would actually have this person go out and take shots of my jobs in progress on a regular basis so that I really could verify how much progress is getting done as a COO of the company, right? And to be able to look at that and verify my production output. And also it's great for showing your clients, you know, where you're exactly at. The other thing I like to use this for is you got your quality issues besides production. You can zoom down on those issues and safety. The nice thing about this, this is a fantastic learning tool. And I say learning tool because you don't want to document it as a safety report because we don't want to uh, have OSHA come in and want to be able to say, you know, you have un you, let's have all that in our records. But use this as training, you know, take a picture of, you, you know, your crews in action. Is everything set up where it needs to be? And here you're looking at material, right? Going back to this aspect, you can actually sit and train your, your field leaders on where to set jobs up. And maybe this is an example of a well set up job. And you got one that's an example of a poorly set up job that wastes your labor and your efficiency goes out the door. So you've got that now one person that you've hired at X amount of dollars, which is a lot lower than any kind of estimator you're gonna bring in. And they're not only funneling through to your estimating department, they're getting you valuable information to train your operations team and to monitor your production quality and safety at the same time. So I, I for me, that's a triple, or almost a four duple win there. <laughs> <laughs> now we're creating new new measurements. New value, baby. <laughs> uh, you know, if we have a we have a great picture here. We had some uh deck spot deck replacement and again counting on the field information coming back through data forma, how much you know extra work you know what did you do we have square foot uh pricing for deck replacement and a lot of times the field guys aren't super great about quantifying those activities and now we can just jump in here and say here's our square foot deck replacement area we can send this picture off with our change order or our, or our um deduct or price increase depending on what the whatever the issue may be so it just starts to paint the what's really going on yeah this is a valuable overall tool and that that is the whole key it, it i hate to use the term it pays for itself like a lot of companies do but this actually allows you to make a lot more profit in many areas of your company starting with the accuracy and estimating and then going all the way back out to your field operations and learning about efficiency and interaction with the client. Because you can show them exactly what you've done. Like you said, the bad deck you replaced, there's no question about it. It's not, you know, you don't hear, well, I don't know what angle you took that at. How do I know that is really 30 feet worth of deck you replaced? Well, here it is. Here's the measurements right here. Yeah, really, really hard to argue with it when there's a... Uh... <clears throat> you know, these orthos are actually what's called ortho rectified. They're actually, it compensates for the curvature of the earth. And that's one reason it can provide some really good accuracy. It's, it's a scaled image. It's, it's really hard to argue with when it's in, you know, proverbial black and white. So uh, last, I, I, I kind of wanted to, um, I had a situation come up um, yesterday where, you know, I was thinking about uh, this, this webinar and, um, and some different use cases that we were going to talk about. And I was estimating a job where, you know, it's a uh, city owned building and a consultant is involved who designed the scope. They had an infrared scan done. Whoa, 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 right. Is anybody on this call estimating this job? We don't want to give them a hand up. <laughs> I <have> not. <laughs> but well, I won't talk any numbers per se, but you know, the point of it is, you know, this is a very well-known consultant. They do a great job, but you know, at the end of the day, I was able to take a base map 
and see and scale all the different, let me hide my outlines of them, see and scale all the different outlines of where those wet areas were from that infrared scan. I can guarantee you no other roofing contractor had that ability. And in, and in the Optelos environment, it allowed me um, it allowed me to be able to kind of square those off because we know we're not going to follow the funky shapes of how the IR people um, outline the exact you know thermal anomaly. We're going to square those off for obvious roofing reasons. But you know that allowed me the ability to look at the consultant scope and you know look at the required minimum square footage that they were asking for, and you know also look at hey this is what's really wet right there, even when I square it off. And, and back to your point, John, uh, Mr. Kenny, uh, about making strategic decisions. Absolutely. This, this gave me a leg up on the competition because I knew exactly how much wet there was, you know, and I wasn't relying on somebody else's measurements or sheets or anything like that, you know, uh, assuming that these marks were right by the IR person. You know, I was spot on and that allowed me to make some strategic decisions that is going to increase the possibility of us winning these repairs. Um, you know, another part of the scope was stripping in basically a lot of the seams and and curb flashings on the roof um, and back to that location intelligence. You know, there were some masonry issues where there needed to be some repointing and things like that. And Rather than having to scroll through hundreds of photos, you know, I looked at their their roof drawing, saw the issue, the coded note, and then was able to come right in here and click on the image I wanted so that I can see the wall that I want, you know, pretty much in in, in an instant basis. So that was that's something more from the service side, but thought it was a great use case for our conversation today. Great. Now there's a lot of different ways you can use it, and it's all about accuracy and putting a strategy together. Um, the way to succeed in our industry today is to have these strategies, processes, and systems in place and use them and get the most out of them you can. And this is definitely uh, a great tool that I would recommend any company to be able to consider. Um, and, and if you have any doubts about just using it only for estimating, that's why I wanted to throw a couple other examples in there, how you could use this for more than just one purpose which is what you want to do when you, you purchase anything. Um, do we have any additional questions for today? Um, if not, we're coming to the end here, but this will be available on replay and everyone here will get a, a link to that. Plus it'll be out on the, um, on the YouTube channel for replay if you want to share it with anybody else in your company or someone else in the industry, if you, you're working on the other side, more than happy to do that. So when we close here, so John, Ryan, how do they get a hold of you with any further questions on this? So there's a couple of different ways. Uh, the, the easiest thing to get a hold of me directly would just be to email me, uh, jkiesel at imaginetechnologiesgroup.com. I'm putting that in the chat box right now. Perfect. Just making sure I spelled it right. <laughs> it continued the uh, the spelling down a line there. So that'd be the easiest way. Get a hold of me. We can get you plugged in. Have a you know we can schedule a Zoom call one on one and you know talk a little more closely as to what your specific needs are, and we can tailor a lot of these solutions to what you're actually going to be doing. So as we said, we partner with Run You on how to train you on how to fly, and we also sell the Optelos platform for your, you know, direct integration into your company and provide the training on how to use the Optelos platform and make it function for roofing. Not very difficult. This is not hard, super hard, not difficult to implement. We implemented our first uh, drone pilot uh, in about 45 days and trained him on how to fly and he started doing a great job and now he's our chief of our drone pilot program trained another one of our service estimators on drone flight so he's going out doing service assessments with the drone so it's not difficult i know it looks very tech techy but it's not rocket science i promise you sounds good well that uh 
Uh, brings us, do you have a question, Dennis? No, I said I appreciate your time. It was very, very, it's interesting. I'm, uh, I lived in Columbus for five years, so I'm trying to look you guys up and see how close you were to my old house. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not too, we're probably 30 minutes, no matter where it was, because everything in Columbus is 30 minutes away from yeah. the yeah, I've been over <laughs> close to OSU for a bit, but, um, you know, yep, I, I love minutes. Columbus. Yeah, it was nice. It just, the, uh, the weather got to me every now and then, but like right now, you guys are experiencing a pretty nice, what, 80 degrees, I want to say, and sunny? Finally. Yes. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if anybody right, well, wants to reach out, let's, you know, let's get something on the schedule. We're usually fairly flexible. We can get things done. We spend about a half an hour together and just talk about however we can help. Yep. Yeah, sounds great. I really appreciate you. All Thank right. You. Take care, everybody. All right, Thank guys. You, Thank you. Thank you. Take Peace care. Bye-bye.